Hello and welcome to our time together. I send a hug and a kiss to all of you. Looking forward to when we can all worship together again. The, the welcome and notices are following. The words will be on the screen. Feel free to join in with those in bold. We are delighted to welcome Glenn Evans to our service today. Here we are, Lord, worshipping you. Come amongst us, God of all grace. By your spirit, the spirit that moves and inspires each of us, come and transform us as we worship. Amen. 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 Our opening prayers. Loving and gracious God, we rejoice to know your presence with us at all times and in all places. When we feel needy, you hear us and answer us. When we feel threatened, you hear us and answer us. When we cry, uh, cry out to you, you hear us and answer us. Loving and Loving gracious, and gracious God. God, you are good, good abounding, abounding in steadfast love to all on you. When we have gone astray, you love us and forgive us. When we have messed up, you love us and forgive us. When we have followed our own desires, you love us and forgive us. Loving. Loving and gracious God, your love for us knows no bound, for you are ever amongst us. In Jesus, to share our life. We turn our hearts and minds to worship you. Receive our love. We sense your transforming power at work in our lives. Receive our love. We long to be filled with your spirit and become more like you. Receive our love. Loving, Loving and, and gracious God, God we, we worship you today. today. Amen. Amen. So our first hymn is Longing for Light, with the music provided by Matt Lum.
The reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers, and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown them before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Amen. The second lesson is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that sin, since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. And now we welcome Glenn, who's bringing his message to us today. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you very much for letting me join you in your worship this morning. It's both a pleasure and a privilege to be sharing this service with you. It's very hard for everyone being kept apart from each other, and I long for the day when we can all return 
to a normal life and worship together again. This is being recorded on Tuesday evening and I'm really excited. Can you guess why? <laughs> it's because the Premier League starts tomorrow and I'm excited <laughs> at the prospect of Sheffield United triumphing both at Wembley and in Europe. <laughs> By the time you watch this, of course, those dreams may already be shattered. But tonight, I'm excited. I believe it's a positive thing for us to be able to dream of enjoyable things. It's good to be able to escape from reality into a hobby or a passion. I hope we all have places we can go where we know we can be happy and enjoy ourselves. We need to have this dimension in our lives because otherwise we can be overwhelmed by the problems of life. There are often challenges and difficulties that confront us. Today's lectionary readings are about some of these challenges. St. Paul writes about us being slaves to sin. That's a problem that often gets us down. In the very next chapter of Romans, Paul writes this. I don't do the good I want to do. Instead, I do the evil that I do not want to do. So in today's reading, Paul is not saying that we must be perfect in order to be Christians. Rather, he is saying that Christ's death on the cross is what makes us perfect in the sight of God. Paul is saying that if we have died to sin, past tense, because that is what Christ has achieved for us, and from now on, we live to God. The final verse in the passage reads like this in the Good News Bible. In the same way you are to think of yourselves as dead, so far as sin is concerned, but living in fellowship with God through Christ Jesus. This is not escapism, like our hobbies and passions. This is the reality of what Christ brings into our lives if we let him. The words of Jesus in our Gospel reading are equally challenging. They begin in with the same idea of being slaves to sin or slaves to Beelzebub, the equivalent of Baal or Satan, the enemy of God. And it is this enmity which sets a man against his father, a daughter against her mother. It is such a fundamental division that you cannot sit on the fence and find a typical British compromise. You have to choose between God and evil. You cannot serve both masters. It is not easy to pick up the cross and follow Jesus, but if we do, we will find life and we will find love. We will find the life of eternity in Christ. As he says in verse 32, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And we will find the love that numbers even the grey hairs on our head, or whatever colour they are. So the two readings work in parallel. There's a choice between the road of sin and evil that is heading for death, and the road of crucifixion and resurrection that is heading for life and love. It is the second road that Christ took for us. And if we choose to follow him, we will receive both the forgiveness that his death has achieved and the eternal victory of life and love that he has won for us in his resurrection on Easter day. This is not escapism, like our hobbies and passions. This is the reality of what Christ brings into our lives if we let him. Sheffield United are not going to win the FA Cup and European qualification this year. And even if by some miracle they do, 
is going to be very much a one-off. But the victory of Christ is this year and every year and for eternity. So let's choose the life and love which Christ is offering us. Amen. We'll now sing him from song, Singing the Faith. Lord, we have come at your own invitation. We're blessed by the Wright family who are producing the music for this video. price is often confused with value as we bring our prayers for others today we hold in our minds those on whom little value is sometimes placed knowing that god's love for each one is immense holy god gentle and strong god we pray today for babies and small children those who live near to us those who live far away in lands torn apart by war or famine, those who are sick, Lord, hear us. Lord, oh, Lord God graciously hear us. Hear us. Holy God, gentle and strong God, we pray today for young people who, scarred, who are scarred by the past, those who fear the future, those whose lives have been disrupted in recent months, and all who feel lost. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Hear. Holy God, gentle and strong God, we pray today for all who are sick in body, people in our families with cancer or degenerative diseases, people near and far affected by coronavirus and other illnesses. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. Holy God, gentle and strong God, we pray today for all who struggle to hold on to good mental health, Friends living with depression, anxiety, addiction. And for ourselves in these times of uncertainty and fear. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Holy God, gentle and strong God. 
We pray today for all who are dying and those who have been recently bereaved. We know that your love is stronger than death. Surround them with that love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Holy God, gentle and strong God, we pray today for any who feel lost, abandoned, neglected, or unvalued, for whatever reason. We know that you came to seek and to save the lost, and we pray that they may know your gentle and strong love surrounding them at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, oh, Lord graciously hear us. We bring our prayers together with the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy will, thy will be done, be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not, lead us not, lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. For thine and the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? The challenge in words written by John Bell and music was provided by Ian Turner. blessing. We will follow you, our God, into the week ahead. We will go wherever you lead us. So lead us. Heavenly Father, lead us. Amen. Amen. Amen.